this works. Well, hi everyone. Please join us on the here in the front. Ethan is around, uh, but he's not. Uh, uh, he was here, but, but yeah. Uh, Anas, will you join us here in the front? Uh, if you want, no. Just anywhere. Huh? Yeah. It's, you can join here. Okay. <laughs> so. Melissa, can you also, also look uh, whether the camera is in a way that it catches everyone? Yeah, I don't need to sit. Uh, okay, it's fine. Uh, yeah, you should press recording, please. There on the right side. Uh, it is recording. Uh, I think I've pressed it before. So, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Greetings from Dubai. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. <laughs> Bravo. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have today here at the Digital Innovation Pavilion, we have the Digital Art for Climate and Youth Day. It's uh, as the thematic priority of the COP28 uh, presidency for today is youth. We are highlighting our flagship initiative. It's Digital Art for Climate. We are uh, aiming to have all of society engaged in the fight against the climate crisis. And we believe that Web3 web technology can help them, that really we create the systems for uh, and the digital tools for everyone and especially young people and creative community to contribute to these uh, global efforts in a way that is rewarding and uh, we will start with a presentation from Tom uh, from Bueno, our tech partner and also artist uh, and colleague friend and uh, yeah and then we will discuss. Uh, you know, I will then afterwards also present how uh, we are using this for innovative resource mobilization and for climate action learning. Irina will say introductory words uh, about digital art for climate. And then we will hear from others uh, some perspectives on how this kind of uh, engagement of the creative community, new uh, frameworks for creative economy can help uh, the climate action empowerment. So. Tom, please, the floor is yours, and we switch the screen to your presentation. How do I change the... Hola, hola. Here or here? As you wish. What do you say? Uh, I said I have to check the camera, but this is my... I can't. Okay, okay. Hello, hello. Have you ever imagined how the world will be when everything is digitalized? Well, I have, and I will tell you a little bit about this. My name is Tomas, and we are going to talk about the creator economy and digital collectibles. So let's start asking ourselves, why do we create? We create to empower ourselves to have the opportunity to create more value for ourselves, for our family. For
uh, inspiration to do our creations so we can overcome these challenges thanks to the blockchain. So with the blockchain, we can have and meet like-minded people and build a community. We have, uh, we can have our creations and our artworks certificated and authenticated. We can find, thanks to the blockchain and the digital economy, so a source of income for our creations. Also, we can trace our assets. We can know who bought our asset, who sold our asset. Independence, we, we don't need uh, galleries, we don't need curators. We can be our own curators and our own gallery thanks to the blockchain and the digital collectible. So what is blockchain? Imagine blockchain as the younger brother of the internet. We know that the internet is a, a place, a digital place that works thanks to a lot of servers, but these servers are centralized, you know? For example, Google, for example, Facebook, all our information is in those servers. What will happen if someday Google get hacked of, or if Facebook servers got in a fire. We are going to lose all our identity, all our memories, all our information. But the blockchain, as I said, is like an internet, but it's decentralized. The information is in nodes, and nodes are everywhere around the world. Everybody could have a node. So the information is decentralized, is borderless, because is community-owned, is transparent, you can trust in this information and it's very secure. Another thing that blockchain allows is to have currencies. These currencies is the ones what, that we use to have to own or to buy digital collectibles. So what is an NFT? What is a digital collectible? An NFT is a non-fungible token. So non-fungible tokens are used to identify and prove ownership of this content to prove and identify ownership of these assets you can treat uh, you can have traceability and transparency of the works of the piece of art that you are creating this is an nft so what is non-fungible let's start for talking about what is fungible. Fungibles are things that we can change between classes. For example, I can change $1 bill for another $1 bill because are, they belong to the same category. Semi-fungibles are things that we can change within classes. For example, if we go to the movies and we go to see Spider-Man, we can change our seats because we are looking the same movie. But what happens if you are looking, if you are going to watch Spider-Man, I'm going to watch Iron Man. We can change because we are not seeing the same movie. So semi-fungibles are only fungible within classes. And non-fungible are things that we can change because they don't have the, like, the same value. For example, I can change my shoes for your telephone because are not fungible. So this makes things unique. So uh, these are common questions that people have regarding NFT or digital collectibles. Is an NFT a cryptocurrency? No. An NFT is a token, is an asset. Can a physical item be an NFT? Yes. Physical items could be NFTs, could be artwork, digi uh, physical artworks, NFT. Yes, a physical artwork could be an NFT. So what kind of things could be NFT? Could be audio tracks, could be uh, photography, could be uh, 3D animation. We can have in the gaming world, we can have avatars, weapons, vehicles. In the writing world, we can have poems, books as an NFT. So practically anything could be an NFT. So let's talk a little bit more about what is a digital currency. Digital currency exists in the blockchains. They are used to buy and to trade and to invest. 
the best known cryptocurrency is the Bitcoin, but there is a lot of more cryptocurrencies. And to have a cryptocurrency, you need a crypto wallet. If you want to open a crypto wallet, I can explain you later. So cryptocurrencies versus NFT. We, we already know that there are different stuff, but we can use cryptocurrencies to buy NFT. And NFT is almost everything, physical and digital assets. So what are the benefits of the NFTs of the digital asset? They are secure. They are transparent because we can trace all the transactions. The, in the world of the art and the creation, the artists can have revenue and royalties in some marketplaces. So for example, if I'm a photographer and I sold one of my photographies and this photography is sold again, I don't get any royalty from the secondary sale. In the case of NFTs, we can have royalties forever of our creations. So it proves the authenticity of our piece of art because everybody knows who is the creator of, of, of every NFT, of every digital collectible because it's on chain, it's on the blockchain, it's traceable and it's accessible for everywhere. You can access to your NFT or your digital collectibles from any device, if you have internet, of course. So I want, I want to, change, to share with you a couple of examples of NFT use cases. For example, one of my favorite is uh, Ethio, an Ethiopian uh, art collective, which did uh, record a video of their dance, a dance that they used to bring rain into their, into their region. And they record this and sell this as an NFT. They sell this as a digital collectible for $14,000. And they use this money to, to create a well, a water well for the community. So this is how culture can help communities to overcome. Also, the Medusa collection is uh, 6,000 pieces of Medusas, different Medusas which were sold and the money that the artists got from this collection were used to educational initiatives. So we can, with our imagination and our creation, we can bring good with the world, for the world. So where the NFT come from? The, the history of NFT start at 2017 until now. We have a, we, one of the best example of the history of NFT is the NBA. The NBA create this um, this project called Top Shots, where you can own moments of history. You can own, for example, the moment when Michael Jordan won the championship. You can you can buy that NFT. You can buy that moment because that moment, of course, belong to the NBA, and the NBA can solve those moments. Uh, there are a lot of NFT platforms out there. This is our, these are the most famous ones, the most known ones. And he, the NFT have an history in a lot of, in, a, in a, almost all the industry you have used. These examples are, for example, in the fashion, Dolce & Gabbana launched a collection of NFT of an exclusive collections. You can use the wearables in the metaverse, but also you can have the physical ones. In the gaming, there is a lot of examples, but in the impact world, we, we have uh, this example of the carbon drop, which raises $6.6 .6 million for the Open Earth Foundation. So if you want to launch your NFT, you can reach me out. I will help you to do your digital collectible and for your time. Thank you very much, Tom. Yeah, uh, we have asked uh, Tom to make this general introduction because uh, we want to reach with these tools everyone. And uh, currently, these uh, NFTs, they are something that those who are into blockchain, these people understand uh, what it is. But we want to uh, create uh, solutions and tools where everyone... technological details about and here today this event is to start the journey so to say
people then have a, a message and a plan that is uh, collectively, collaboratively developed. And talking about cooperation, let's uh, listen to Irina Karagiao. Uh, expert and the mother of digital art for climate, the co-coordinator of digital art for climate. Um, th thank you, Miroslav. Uh, so I'm happy to welcome you all here at the Digital Innovation Pavilion. We began this initiative back in 2021. how sustainability is important to them because they have a personal experience with climate disasters or because they care about the nature and they care about the environment. For me, environment is all about the humans. If there is no human, there's no environment. Hence, environment is our fundamental human right. And we as humans are creative. Uh, this year, we launched here the Digital Innovation Pavilion Creators Imagine in the Future Dialogues because I believe that every single individual is a creator. Just like deities, we have the power to create. Also, I'm an architect and I can safely say that our process in coming with the building, coming with the structure, it always begins with imagination. It always begins with what you want to do, how you imagine things to be, looking like, feeling like, uh, an engagement with communities. Also about the Web3 space. Web3 brought us something fundamental. Web3 is not really about the technology, because technology is evolving, is developing, but we're not here for the technology. Web3, for the first time, has introduced us the power of communities, or rather reimagining communities, re re thinking the importance of communities. So it is really of the industries, even though I do not like to call it an industry, um, is a space, uh, it's an innovation, it's a movement, and it all begins with the community. So I'm very happy that today we gathered uh, great teams, great individuals, who have been in the space for a long time and they came here today to share their experience, their views on how to build communities, the role of communities, uh, the adoption of NFTs and Web3 technologies for communities. With the Digital Art for Climate, last year we had another exhibition at COP27 in Sharm el Sheikh. And this year we're here today to get together, to brainstorm, to discuss, to listen and hear what the creators and what community builders, what technology providers want to build and how their solutions will give us real impact for environment, for SDGs. Uh, one of these solutions, Miroslav will be talking later on today, but at this point, uh, I thank you all for the attention and I would like to invite other panelists to join the discussion. Oh, okay, introduction, please, Miroslav, thank okay. you. Yeah, so thank you very much, Irina. Uh, also, and especially for all the great work that you have done the last two and a half years uh, in this field. You are really a champion and uh, very passionate global citizens, and we love you for this. So uh, we've heard from Tom some basics and about... Uh, make it possible to have new type of creative economy but uh, the possibilities of web3 technologies be go beyond this and uh, the web3 technology potentials for all of society potentials and uh, our uh, additional pillars uh, of this um, potentials I will show you here and this was something that was presented at the, in the context of the UN High-Level Political Forum for Sustainable Development last year, there was a special series of uh, events on SDGs learning, innovative learning uh, for about global goals and uh, bringing them to the schools. And we've presented now our Digital Art for Climate idea. 
So uh, it says that it's a combination of climate awareness raising and public participation through a global art competition. This year it will be accompanied also with a music competition. And the second pillar is resource mobilization, uh, innovation for youth-focused action for climate empowerment. And the third pillar is that uh, we can use this technology and the associated uh, solutions that we have, are developing also for uh, bringing uh, climate action learning into the schools in a way that is entertaining and rewarding for the kids. So our organization, IAI, is a civil society organization based in Austria, accredited to the UN through the Economic and Social pa uh, uh, Council, uh, Department for Global Communication, UNFCCC, Green Climate Fund. And we are building the Global Challenges Action Empowerment Ecosystem Glotcher with culture, technology, and organizational innovation. The vision is empowering everyone everywhere to take meaningful and rewarding climate action. And uh, we are joining forces with the Climate Chain Coalition, which is the world's leading network of organizations that are using, uh, looking how to advance the uptake of blockchain technology and related emerging technologies for climate action. So we have this focus on individuals and youth and we are developing these solutions like the individual climate action app. So uh, let me go here briefly, some photos from uh, past uh, events, uh, highlights from Glasgow. Uh, our participants in Nairobi uh, UN, with UN Habitat, uh, there was a, a mural creation activity in the informal settlement in the slums of Nairobi, and they were very, very happy and inspired that they have uh, had a chance to communicate to the global audience. We've been on CNN, we've been on Shibuya, uh, billboards, and at MENA Climate Week, at the, at the UN headquarter. We have now had already for two times the during the third week of uh, September, just before the UN General Assembly High Level Week, the opportunity to have an exhibit on the ground floor of the UN conference building and also two days conference. We've been at Seattle uh, NFT Museum and uh, many other places. So the key point here is that with NFTs, we can uh, frame climate action as a digital badges collection game that people take action, as Tom has said, almost anything can be turned uh, into an NFT. And so we are uh, uh, framing climate action and climate action uh, outcomes as NFTs, uh, which people can then register in a global registry and uh, getting it recognized. And uh, it can then be also collected and traded on an individual or class school dashboard. This is a very basic idea of uh, this um, global registry that will then turn an NFT into an impact NFT. Because uh, only if we have the relational information between the creator minting an NFT, the somebody who wants to support these causes buying the NFT and then uh, the money from the purchase going to uh, the projects and the project generating action. And if we have between these entries the relational information, then at the end, the one who the creator and also the ones who are buying the NFT can uh, get attributed the actions and the action outcomes that they are enabling to their wallets and so they can build a legacy. They can really feel that they have done something rele relevant. And this uh, is uh, the idea that we bring around Digital Art for Climate um, this topic into the school. We develop a model for um, an edutainment hub, very simple tools about NFTs and uh, digital identity, uh, digital finance, uh, 
registries and this kind of things. And then uh, the kids can uh, go and um, um, engage in this global ecosystem and get uh, the activities of their school or their individual activities and their individual artworks also recognized on a global level. And this will be the framework for building the movement and UAE COP28, this is for us the place to demonstrate this. And our uh, big plan now is that uh, we bring this to the United Nations uh, Summit of the Future. Within the UNFCCC, uh, within the UN system, the most important conference next year will be the Summit of the Future. And we are now uh, starting today, so to say, this call, uh, this community building and uh, preparation of the call for submissions for the co-creation digital art for climate edition. And uh, with you, we would like to hear how uh, we should frame it, what additional components should we consider uh, in addition to the activities and solutions that were presented before and with this i invite everyone uh, to join us here to um, that we hear your reflections and your suggestions for the future work in this field yeah. perhaps let's start with uh, fernando you are uh, a systemic thinker and uh, i will give you mine okay yeah, uh, and uh, you have studied uh, psychological aspects, brain science and everything, and you are uh, working on using culture for a big transformation. So what are your thoughts regarding digital art for climate, uh, what has been done so far and the plans for the summit of the future? Where do you see all the potentials for synergy with your plans? Uh, thank you, Amiro. It's 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 important to understand that uh, if we think about this and frame this out, uh, digital innovation as a bridge to um, bring uh, the equivalent of Web two to Web three, which is what's happening even in this conference. As we get, uh, we need these tools essentially to advance how we communicate with each other, and then then essentially how we uh, express uh, our visions to each other effectively. Uh, so my background is in. Uh, creativity, behavior economics, and economics, and making pop music uh, for pop stars. And over the time, I realized that, as, uh, as Irina, you mentioned, uh, we, we artists are constantly creating reality, and, and uh, we have the power to use that creative ability to articulate stories that actually make a massive impact on the planet. And so I built an institute, uh, the Garibay Institute, which actually does this and bridges uh, the creatives and the creative class with uh, global leadership platforms like UN now and uh, and World Economic Forum and other communities to help articulate these incredibly important narratives that not only unite, uh, but unite us for a sustainable global cause. Very good. Uh, Mari, would you like to say a few words about, you have been now with us on this journey since more than a year and we are preparing uh, also an, uh, digital art for climate, the Japan program. Would you like to share uh, on the past and the outlook for the future? What do you think? So I've been, I'm a digital artist based in Japan. And I came here for MENA Climate Week and met Milo and get to know uh, Digital for Climate. And I think it was very uh, great. I think it's a great uh, project. And I really wanted to join as an artist. But also, I want to spread more to the more like Japan and Asian world because I believe uh, Asia, uh, Asia and uh, Japan has a lot of talented artists, but they don't know about this activity. And they, I think they would love to join, but there's no way to join this kind of climate action. Uh, they co cannot contribute to, to climate action. So I thought we join, uh, I joined, so we can make the pass for the open uh, 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 a bit, uh, uh, opportunity to artists to join this activity. And uh, also, um, I'm an artist, so I always create art. But, uh, I think uh, art is more like non-verbal communication. So it it's uh, over the language, or uh, then it uh, it's a uh, kind of talk to 
compassion and the spirit and the mind. So the it helps the people to um, aware uh, raise awareness and uh, and want more to know and get to know and want to join to this kind of activity more. So I I believe uh, so that's why I joined last year and now today we we're gonna announce uh, we will make a uh, digital program in Japan as well. So I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Bravo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are happy to have you with us. And uh, as you mentioned, nonverbal communication. And uh, it's also music is nonverbal communication. And with Christina, we are on this journey already for uh, more than 11 years now. And uh, it's... Uh, Tell us a little bit about the transformative power of music, and uh, perhaps also uh, you, as somebody who Hello was knows this too. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but also, uh, we have started uh, as a standard competition, uh, Global Challenges Youth Music Contest for the Rio Plus Twenty Summit, and now we are adding this next level of technology. Do you? see a problem in it or more an opportunity well you know me <laughs> because i'm challenged technology is very difficult for me however i see i mean i see the beauty of it and i certainly try to to adapt my my talents to it however i you know it's all about a balance and it's all about bringing you know the love of humanity together with the technology because when we can marry that then we have a movement then we have a balanced world then we have a world that's actually speaking from the heart and actually take making changes and making movement in a very positive fashion because you can do all the technology you can and you're still kind of talking to yourself but the minute you open your heart uh, with your art, with your music, with your dance, whatever expression, creative expression you have, then you're reaching out to everybody and you're connecting the world. And that's the way, that's the real change is when we start to unify and bring everyone together and work together. And I believe everyone's an artist. I mean, you know, we were all little children painting, doing our beautiful paintings. And so everybody can, it can do something. You can sing, you can dance. Everybody can have a great experience expression and that's what that's kind of what our our competitions now have kind of moved into it's into express your art and then and then see how we can change the world okay yeah beautiful yeah and uh, mentioning also you have worked a lot with UN department for global communication and that they are also uh, a partner in this uh, that we are uh, so this is somehow in the UN Secretariat the office which is trying to amplify and to communicate the work of the UN system to the world and they have a civil society engagement unit and we are associated partners there and also uh, our youth delegates are among the the leaders uh, in this uh, mechanism and so we will really use the whole UN system, communication system for amplifying the voices and bringing hope and engagement opportunities, action opportunities, contribution opportunities to the uh, people around the world and especially also to young people. And uh, Ethan is uh, a champion that is uh, doing in his uh, environment in Los Angeles really great work please tell us about and uh, what it also uh, appears to please yeah yeah um i mean i think one thing to talk about yeah. uh what what i do right now my background actually is is maybe where i'll start my i i went to school for fine art and was a visual art major um and I had, at a young age, a, a pretty interesting career in the arts. And I left school early after like six months because I wanted to work in the climate space. Um, and art wasn't doing that for me or wasn't, giving, wasn't allowing me to do that. Um, and then so it was kind of like a pendulum swing where I was like doing only art and it was just about me and self-exploration. And I said, I don't want to think about myself. I want to yeah. think about other people. And I and there's a common notion, I think, that art is about self-exploration and self-inquiry, which it often usually is. But 
for me, it was like too much. And I wanted to think about the world and I couldn't help but think about the world. And anyways, I, the pendulum swung and I started working on this project called Here, which was more of a bird's eye view and really not about me and more about asking a lot of people different questions and asking people, what are you here for? And I I kind of think that the art that I practice now is is inquiry with other people and listening um, and, and learning. That's become an interesting sort of art for me, I think. Uh, and so what what my project does now is we create uh, workshops, festivals, uh, content and technology that help people take action around the causes that they are here for. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much for the great work that you're doing. And we will try to connect uh, as, as, as an example that this local efforts, they need a global home also where then uh, the connections and the the global relevance is amplified. Anash, uh, if I may ask you, you are an expert in uh, Web3 technology, DAOs, innovative resource mobilizations, uh, and you are here from the UAE, the COP28 host country, which has really a strong focus on innovation. Uh, and what are your thoughts and uh, also are you aware of uh, initiatives that are out there where we can create synergies with? So a brief introduction to me. Uh, my name is Anas. Um, I'm the founder of ArtStyle. I lead one of the largest Web3 communities here in the Middle East. Last year, we raised about $1.5 million to deploy into digital art. Um, I've personally invested more than half a million dollars into crypto, NFTs, a range so, you know, we discussed NFTs earlier. We have like two crypto punks. We have a lot of uh, heritage NFTs and things like that. We also host our own festival, which is just a, a little nod to you. A couple of things, a couple of things that I wanted to, to note is that I believe Web3 uh, has the capacity to mobilize serious resources in the fight against, um, you know, climate change. Um, I've been affiliated with KlimaDAO in the past, a DAO which raised funds to deploy into you know, several different types of initiatives. I believe they're here uh, at COP28. This time they have a full-fledged DAO which raised money from the public completely to deploy into a combination of initiatives to plant different types of trees initiatives to support the reduction of carbon emissions, um, policy actions against you know, major uh, fossil fuel kind of producing uh, organizations. So you know, my, at ArtStyle, we, we don't, we don't uh, do that kind of political advocacy. Um, we would love to if we, if we can. It, it's not that easy to do that kind of thing. Um, what we have done is support a lot of uh, charitable initiatives through the power of community. The power of community is something that's quite palpable. Um, when you have a movement, a story to tell to a large number of people, so we have about 800 members at ArtsDAO, all of which are on the higher echelons of kind of UAE society. Many of them, you know, collectively have a net worth in excess of three billion in wealth. This community can do a lot with the right story, with the right kind of initiatives behind it. And uh, my hope is to work with other organizations that maybe have the right storyline around climate change uh, to, to, to move in that direction. In the past, we've supported charitable causes outside the climate change initiatives, you know, around, um, you know, charitable causes for children, charitable causes for um, uh, war, et cetera. Um, and, and so, yeah, just a nod again to what you said earlier about how communities are effectively essential. I'll talk a lot about that on my panel later on. Uh, are you? How is the technology adoption in the region? Do you have uh, efforts to reach beyond the crypto community, or are you uh, find uh, educating the broader society about Web three technology? Because we we have here the crypto community, and uh, outside the COP mainly, and uh, we have the climate action community inside uh, this uh, bubble here and there's a little uh, connection but uh, here there are billions and here are only I, don't, I think they're all together 200 million or I don't know how many wallets exist there currently users of Web3 technologies so uh, it's a relatively small community and we uh, 
try also with this digital innovation pavilion build the bridge also with digital art for climate of course because uh, be between the crypto solution providers and the climate action community uh, do you have experience also in advertising or popularizing this kind of solutions for the for the broader society yeah certainly firstly i'll say um the uae has a 30 percent adoption rate for crypto which is one of the highest in the world uh, the per capita income of citizens in the uae is somewhere in excess of thirty five thousand to forty thousand dollars so if you think about that it's a very high per capita income jurisdiction that holds a very high concentration of crypto wealth um that's a result of many issues i mean reasons you know you have a tax friendly jurisdiction you have um a concentration of uh, government policies that have been very much in favor prince hamdan very recently passed legislation uh in favor of metaversal strategy crypto laws um also in you know a lot of initiatives on the ai front which have come here so you know i've had the pleasure of working with many of such organizations the likes of ripple uh binance you know uh i think one of your partners here What what so what, what what I can say is simply that I believe um, you know I think I think we're, we're very lucky to be here all of us um, this is a turning point um, a lot of a lot of um, interests a lot of uh, innovations happening here in the UAE um, and and anyone who's out here can build something uh, that 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 the government will support. Yeah, this is um, this is impressive. What we're hearing from the media back in Europe is that UAE is pioneering the space, and also recently uh, there was a big conference by ITU where UAE presented a high high level strategy for metaverse adoption. Um, and as what is your take on the metaverse? Do you think that we are close to the adoption of the metaverse technology, or is just for the privileged, the most developed? and richest countries. Okay, so the metaverse is a, is it, it has several different definitions, right? You have some people thinking that it is a plane digitally where we can be represented in some form. Think about Second Life, um, think about, you know, uh, what Meta, Facebook has been working on. Um, you have metaverses in, originally coming from the gaming space. So if th those of us who grew up with World of Warcraft, Diablo, those are metaverses where you have a character, you have different types of digital assets in there, you have an economy. The idea of a metaverse is interesting because some people believe it, it is a solution to reducing significant um, amounts of carbon emissions. If you think about it, um, recently, so Meta Zuckerberg launched an interesting um, showcase of how a modern metaverse might operate, right? And he did this with Lex Friedman. The metaverse initially looked very pixelated, but now uh, with the advancement in, in tech, it seems that it is it is very, very, the likeness of a person in that metaverse is very accurate. So yesterday I was, um, I was in a meeting with a number of folks uh, from the Solana team, major blockchain, uh, from also a number of gaming developers. We had a discussion about, you know, generally metaversal strategy, et cetera. And the, the guy in Solana, what he told me was, look, if there's a metaverse out there that can help me, can, can prevent me from having to fly to California, because he has to fly to California quite a bit, he's going to do that. He's not interested in fl flying 18 hours or so every time from Dubai to California to have those meetings. We can have Zoom meetings right now. Maybe that's not good enough, right? Maybe we're not able to read body language. Maybe we're not able to understand how uh, different types of, you know, 80% of language is communicated in, in non-verbal formats. So a metaverse in, let's say, two to three years, which is sufficiently advanced, could save significant sums of travel in the sense that, you know, you can meet, talk, correspond, build business with people without the need to, to, to migrate to a whole other region. Think about how much of an impact the aviation industry has on climate change every year, right? So that, that's my view. I think it's very bullish. I'm positive about the changes in the space. Thank you, Anas. Mari, would you like to add to this? What's your view? Yeah. How's Japan doing with the metaverse and uh, okay. adoption? Uh, metaverse, yeah. Uh, the Japan, VTuber is quite popular. So everyone having avatars. But I think, oh, okay. <laughs> 
So metaverse, I, as you said, it's really, I, I think we, we can be really efficient for like meeting. Like for example, this cop is uh, 80,000, 100,000 people flying in. And I, I appreciate, I, I think it's great thing to people together, but uh, car, as a carbon emissions, that's a lot. So if uh, yeah, we talked about the COP uh, Metaverse COP like last year, we ha have di having discussion. Yeah, we did have yeah, COP in did. the Metaverse yeah. last yeah, year. Thanks to the uh, to yes. the team who also did a, a digital gallery, mm -hmm. a gallery with VR technology for yeah. the uh, for the winners mm -hmm. of the COP twenty seven yeah. art competition. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's as right. you said, a uh, virtual human getting very high, and also the real time rendering very high quality these days. So. The existence is not so like far from your existence, and uh, we can communicate better. So yeah, and uh, a lot of company in Japan is uh, also gaming industries. In Japan is a, a lot of game company, and uh, yeah, originally there already has a metaverse, and they have uh, network games. So it's uh, it's coming, I think. Yeah, and also I'm also making a festivals. So I'm a VJ, originally VJ, visual jockey. So I play visual world of musicians. But uh, when COVID happens, everything stopped. So we did a, a festival over the streaming. So I did VJ inside some metaverse and it was still enjoyable. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some of the metaverse has a festivals. I think uh, Thomas has uh, another metaverse festival soon. And uh, yeah, I think it's very interesting aspect of uh, this kind of event to meet people. Thank you, Mary. Fernando, from your perspective, um, how can we enable better collaboration and how can we get closer to the real world in-person interaction, which is still preferred because we build trust when we look at each other's eyes here in the Middle East. It is uh, essential to meet in person, to get to know each other before you start collaborating on a project. Uh, but with this technology, we there is a huge benefit to the environment. There is a huge benefit to saving our time, not needing to be in the traffic jams, flying for 18 hours, et cetera, et cetera. But how can this report be built? That's, that's a good question. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I do agree with, with the, if you look at uh, this uh, during the COVID era, how that fast tracked Zoom to be our natural inclination and how to communicate rather than a phone call. It's awkward to take a phone call now. You take a FaceTime or a Zoom. So, so that, it's a, a, a litmus to what's going to happen essentially with Meta, what Facebook is doing. It's incredible. Lex Friedman was amazing. Uh, they, there are certain parts. So, language does um, linguistic uh, registration in our brain is only literally like 5%. So we do know that aspect, or at least familiar with that aspect. So it's very small. And uh, how we communicate is uh, beyond uh, the traditional understanding of our five senses, right? It's multiple things happening uh, from the olfactory senses uh, to uh, beyond, you know, whether you believe in consciousness of being local or non-local, there's a lot of interaction that we can't quantify yet with each other. So the good news is that uh, we are quick to develop our neuroplasticity in our prefrontal cortex, which is essentially a higher order thinking. So if we can adapt to Zoom and not be in person and we're not as satisfied, but we get close enough so it's bearable and, and, and getting to know each other so that relationship can be created, this bond can be created in a very small way, uh, thanks to Zoom and seeing each other communicate and seeing unarmed verbals, that's helpful. Uh, but my, my, my fear is that we're gonna need a lot longer to adapt our reptilian brain to uh, supplement the in-person and the uh, exchange that we get with bond building. But the good news is that it's going, technology will help trick our brain to get to that point, I believe. How so many, we're gonna, how we're many going centuries to, is the question? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think you're going to see this, a very similar pattern, uh, but the longitudinal aspect of this will be um, quite shorter, right? So there's a comfort level. Um, but I think the, there's also a caveat to this, and I've been thinking a lot about this, is, is as, we, as we get this advantage towards digital innovation and, and ways to communicate, we also are going to train ourselves to be more nuanced, right? So if we look at a future where digital, digital innovation is at, it's part of our life, uh, uh, blockchain technology advancing, uh, the democrat, you know, how we look at finance, DeFi, et cetera, we're, we're going to become more sensitive to what is human as we get 
more advancement in our everyday lives as we offload cognitive ability to AI and, and all this extraordinary innovation that's happening in that space. So there's two points to this. One is we will get this advancement of better communicating our messaging, our relationships, uh, creating quicker relationships. But as far as death in relationship, I think it's going to, it's still some work to be done, but I'm optimistic. Thank you. Thank you for injecting optimism. Christina, please. Yeah, I also wanted to ask you, like, in terms of local communities and like music, because we all listen to music and music is actually the medium that uh, has been digitalized a long time ago. And we all, you know, it's, it's a medium of good vibes, good moods. You know, you go for a run, you put music keeps you going. Yes. And this is this is an amazing medium of connecting humanity. Well, it is, but I was actually going to go into the area of how do we um, connect when we can't be uh, when we can't uh, uh, use our five senses because we do have some other senses there that we can utilize. I mean, there is remote viewing out there, but I won't go into that because that's a little far out for this conversation. But you know, I mean, I do feel that uh, the consciousness uh, um, of humanity is going to take a shift. Um, because there is that need as technology starts to ramp up and soar up, then there will be that need for humanity to also bring a balance there, as I, because I'm always talking about balance, bring a balance there. And, you know, that's why we, we begin to communicate with animals and we can communicate with animals and with trees. And, you know, and, and meditation is a really wonderful form of kind of getting outside of your body and touching other parts of the world. So I think that, I believe that is going to actually become enhanced as technology rises. That will rise along with it just naturally. And the consciousness will probably, I feel, is going to take a, a giant leap at some point. That's the hundredth monkey. I'm going to pass. I, I, I hope so, because actually in the tech industry, the more you touch technology, the more you appreciate the quiet moments and going for Vipassana, for tender, it's, it became a luxury. 10 days of silence, reflection, being with your own mind and like getting into alignment with your monkey in the head. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing experience. Yeah, this is what's happening. So this is back to this point of how we evolve alongside technology. We evolve a little bit slower, but so like we're seeing, again, identifying what makes, as we get more advanced uh, digitally, we are a technology gets more um and the barrier entry is lowered right with uh, user interfaces that are friendly to novices uh, we get more sensitive to what's human and i think that's really important uh, and, and to what your point is this is not remote viewing and the conversation of consciousness being local and non-local is now really readily accepted in in next gen right and but it's uh, look at communities like stanford who've been pioneering this this research so it's it's something look a, a good, a good a parallel to this that we, we see now is, you know, the, in, in the Aborigine in Australia, they communicate um, remotely. They don't call each other. They, they have been doing this for centuries. If you look at the Amazon forest and the wisdom that's coming out with the uh, Yawanawa tribe, uh, Yawanawa people, sorry, the indigenous people of Brazil, uh, one of the communities, they communicate their music to the forest and doing it for centuries, right? So uh, it's extraordinary what we lack when we get uh, nulled um, by, and dulled by, uh, by a post-industrial, post-post, post-industrial revolution. I mean, it's extraordinary. We, I love air conditioning, but it's also, you know, there's other things that, that uh, we need to really now look at. And uh, also it's been only human. 100 years, right, of the fossil fuel Th reality. That's, that's Just correct. 100 years. Yeah, yeah. Tiny, yeah. tiny, small yeah. part of our human history. I, I like the idea of what timeline are you looking at? Are you looking at the timeline of a mosquito or a tree, right? And so the, I like the, the tree metaphor because we look at how to innovate from 200 years and impact of 200 years rather than uh, an hour. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. I want to add one little thing. Last night I was on a beach here in Dubai and we heard for 20 minutes we listened to the whale, to the whale calling and the whales can call 500 uh, 500 yard, 500 miles away, they can reach each other. So that's kind of incredible. I just want to add that because it was it was an experience of that you know that leapt us out of our body and communication and talking to each other and reaching out. Wow. 
if I may uh, introduce now also Melissa Jimenez Gomez Tagle, <laughs> uh, our delegate and team member from Mexico. Uh, Melissa is uh, working on health topics and uh, uh, at the Technical University of Munich. And uh, you have been also with us at our workshop in which we have. Uh, developed uh, our programs and uh, other elements of the uh, logistics for the Glotcha co-creation festival which will take place last week of May and first week of June in Austria. Could you add some perspectives from youth research uh, uh, co-creation festival co-organizing team partner? <laughs> yes, of course. Thank you, thank you for the introduction and thank you everybody for being here. Um, well, yes, uh, this, this project, it's about how to bring this possibility of bringing art and digitalize it for, um, for future generations, uh, hopefully. Um, and also what I really focus on at the moment is on eco-anxiety and how can we release this eco-anxiety through the, um, through the use of art. Um, there are some times uh, where people think, uh, how can I, what, what can I do for the climate crisis? I feel desperate, I don't know what to do. Um, they, they think that they have to be hugging trees or something so to, to avoid them to be, to be turned down, uh, but not necessarily. Uh, you can express all these messages of saving the, the climate, saving the planet through art, and also how they feel towards the art. It's okay to have this feeling of solastalgia, it's called, uh, which is the, the fear that someone has for losing the planet or, uh, yes, uh, not being sure about what's going to happen. So what a best way to do it through art. It's a way to do catharsis, uh, psychologically speaking, and also a way to help to, to communicate the climate crisis. And with Miro, what we were doing in, in Klagenfurt uh, was to uh, organize this co-creation festival to help uh, young people to bring their ideas, to bring their artworks, to bring solutions also through art, not just what's worrying them, but also how can they, what, what, which world they imagine to be a good one uh, through the use of art. Um, we were collaborating, it was very fun. Um, also, also with Tom, Tom was there helping us with the, all, uh, understanding the NFT and how even NFT can help with the, with the climate crisis and the climate solutions. And uh, well, it, so far it's been very exciting, uh, something also new, but uh, you're never too old for learning stuff. So keep on it and uh, we're hoping that. And thank you, Mero, once again. Thank you very much, Melissa. And uh, this brings us also this uh, uh, conversation about the psychological factor and uh, community building, the, uh, the need to have spaces where we come together. <clears throat> it's uh, this digital innovation pavilion. It's somehow uh, one of our most successful uh, projects. Uh, and I've seen uh, that it is because people want to come together, they want to talk to one another, and uh, it's a similar logic with our uh, Glotcha co-creation festival also, that people come together, they don't feel so alone anymore, because in this uh, fight for the climate crisis, many people cannot talk at home with, uh, with brothers or sisters or parents, because it's a different world, a different mindset, and you feel often so lonely. But uh, we, with the festival, and so we want to create a space where uh, people feel they have a community, they have an extended family of people who care for the planet and for one another, and uh, therefore it's part of our Digital Art for Climate and Glotcha co-creation program. So. We are starting here today uh, the next round of the uh, Digital Art for Climate program. Initially, we had uh, thought we will have the submission platform ready and we will share the 
the link uh, to the submission platform. We have to admit we don't have uh, the submission platform ready. We will announce at the press conference more a home page uh, on uh, where the content will be and where the uh, the possibility will be to on enlist uh, in the community and uh, enlist also in event announcements for uh, community calls uh, and having then the real launch of the submission page uh, in mm -hmm. January. But uh, yeah, so we have the art and music uh, submission uh, program and uh, we expect to have um, 500, I would say, is somehow our target uh, for submissions that uh, we will have them and then we will uh, go and have um, a curation, some kind of uh, uh, creating a group of finalists uh, where then people, uh, which we then put for up for public voting. And then uh, at the co-creation festival, end of May, first week of June, we will present the winners of this public voting and we will have an edutainment show. Uh, we have booked a youth camp uh, in uh, Austria, in uh, the province of Carinthia, Kärnten, where I live. Uh, we have a youth camp for 120 people uh, and we have booked a cultural center for these two weeks, uh, which uh, has a capacity of 250 people. And there we will then uh, produce an edutainment show bringing the stories from the artists that we are working with, from the submissions, from our finalists and winners, some educational components, some hands-on uh, experiences with this uh, uh, co-creation educational hub uh, program. We will see, perhaps we have by then already a school or so, which is uh, uh, test uh, implementing this. And then we are going, uh, we will learn from what, uh, how this will go there on a relatively small scale. We are then planning to have programs at the, the UN headquarters in New York. I've mentioned before, we have now for two years already conferences there and uh, exhibits. This we will do again next year in September. And in addition to this, we will have uh, an edutainment event also in New York. On what, what scale we will see. We have uh, the ambition to do it uh, within the UN headquarter, but it's a big effort uh, financially and logistically, but we will see. And um, that's, that's a little bit of an outline uh, of our action plan, uh, but let me invite also Alex so that we see that we have a global reach. Alex, bring our 1.3 billion uh, Chinese uh, uh, fellows, uh, fellow global citizens into our movement. Uh, right. We've worked together uh, already in 2012 for the Rio Plus 20 Global Youth Music Contest and it was a very wonderful experience. You've had a big uh, event uh, in, in, China. in China and then since then we are friends and we will certainly collaborate also on the Digital Art for Climate co-creation program. For sure. Um, yes, we work here in uh, in the in the uh, twenty uh, yes twenty twelve right uh, two thousand twelve <laughs> and uh, and um, uh, for the the road to road plus twenty I think um, as Miro mentioned um, Miro has been a champion to mobilize local uh, action local voices to empower young people and uh, himself has been a role model for everyone to inspire us. So as you know that after almost uh, eleven years he's still dedicated to, to, to working on this and getting things better. So I'm so inspired. So uh, as he mentioned that um, um, he was working uh, uh, on, uh, he was working uh, on the summit of future, right? Next year is also very important. I'm thinking that um, uh, there are a few things we can definitely work together and cooperate. Uh, and uh, number one is that, um, uh, uh, number one for the music contest for other contests for the local action contest we can definitely mobilize the national level how we can work with um, IAI and Glocha how we can really work together and um, get things done and to, to try to mobilize uh, local engagement number two uh, is that um, uh, Mention has been also a champion 
uh, Miro. <laughs> Miro has also championed on the digital innovation. And he's the first person to talk with me about blockchain and uh, uh, and uh, uh, what's that crypto uh, the the how to uh, what's the most famous uh, crypto uh, yeah the Bitcoin so he's the person to tell me Bitcoin and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, all this blockchain if I listen to him I will be uh, become a millionaire. <laughs> right, so many years before, before Bitcoin really go up, and I think his avis why, uh, his why avis follow all technologies. But the difference between him and other people is that he really want to use all this new technology into how into climate actions. So how to how we can make best use of uh, um, this digital innovation into climate action is not only purely making money or you know create some coin and sell to other people no he, he's he's not interested in that at all he's always talking about how we can use in blockchain technologies uh, on climate action although he's not in this major but uh, he he become expert uh, this is really um you know this is really um also like you know like uh, a line with what uh, 2006 Nobel uh, peace laureate Professor Yunus uh, um, philosophy that uh, he formed a global committee on social business uh, for sustainable goals and um, um, there's one thing he he uh, there's one quota he will he address UN General Assembly is that um, he thinks the the most adaptive way to achieve sustainable goals number one is uh, apply the methodology of social business, which is Miro has been done for more than two decades, uh, two, two decades, right? Uh, and number two, unleash the use creativity, which is uh, Miro has been uh, done for, for many, many years as well. Number three, make best use of the technology, which is Miro is doing in the past 10 years. So he, he has been a role model. Uh, so I think uh, we can really uh, work with uh, AI and um, all the different uh, partners on digital innovation pavilion that's uh, how we can because even we are talking about digital innovation uh, this crypto or this blockchain for climate actions we still need people to work on the ground otherwise it's you know it's just a paragraph of code code <laughs> so we need also people and you found that the most interesting thing is that uh, the people who are working on web3 and digital innovation are the people who like offline events most. <laughs> Every time in Hong Kong, in Dubai, in Singapore, there are many offline conferences. So go to offline. So you find that these people who are promoting Web3, they meet offline. And then other people, they always talk, oh, let's meet in Metaverse. But actually, they're doing something offline, but they want to meet online. So you see that this is a cross-sector cooperation. I think in this field, we can my you know, like a 10 million mistake is I didn't really listen to Miro to learn Bitcoin and uh, and and uh, blockchain when he talked with me like many many years ago. Um, I was thinking he was drunk, and uh, so I didn't really pay attention to that. But this time, but uh, you know, I I learned this, and, and this time Miro was promoting digital innovation, and digital innovation, and the blockchain, all this new touch, and now AI. I believe that next next year Miro will also bring some spotlight on AI to us, but AI on, on climate actions, we should really follow his thoughts and how we can really work together, and uh, think about uh, how we you know like uh, using these tools uh, and uh, to to solve the problems. This is that number two. Number three is that um, uh, there are also like Miro, uh, since I know because I know him many. Uh, many years, and we work together. Miro has uh, done a lot of things to empower the local change makers and young people. And uh, it is very, very important, you know, like uh, we don't need to change people who attend this. Uh, they thought they, they said there's 100 uh, sons. We don't need to change these people. But we need to work together with everyone to change others, the other almost uh, 7 billion people who are sleeping on the beach. <laughs> we need to make sure that they really follow the discussion how they can really work with us, how they can believe in that uh, 
climate action. And through this, I think what Glocha and uh, AI is doing is very, very important. And they were active on all these uh, UN important meetings. Uh, and uh, he's passionate on the uh, on the mobile, talking with everyone, mobilizing everyone. I think this is, uh, I'm so inspired by him and uh, we'll follow his path and follow his guidance. And uh, we are so looking forward to work with Miro and AI and also every, all the friends in this community. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex. And I promise that I didn't pay him. To. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I don't believe it. I already I sent the bill to your WhatsApp. I, I will charge you. <laughs> yeah. no, but uh, what we've learned also in the cooperation with Alex was that uh, music is really a bridge between uh, we've had uh, this uh, competition in 2012 and uh, we've had 310 submissions and there were i think at least 40 from china and this was so new because in our mind china is a white spot <laughs> on the map and it's uh, there's some kind of uh, communication walls between us and this uh, global community is not really communicate a lot with uh, chinese artists musicians youth and so but with the music it was possible This is a first learning. The second learning was that uh, you've invited me last year to the China Pavilion at the COP27 in Sharm el Sheikh. And uh, their civil society has presented digital solutions for the climate. And I was very impressed what's going on and somehow from the intervention logic. And so the same thinking, the same values, uh, like we have uh, the same understanding that the, the citizen has the power and the, the somehow... Uh, duty, uh, uh, yeah, if we want to have a planet, uh, uh, citizens have to take action. And this was also there, and so really very inspiring. Uh, Fernando, you wanted to add something. Yeah, that's so, so interesting. It's a massive opportunity to leverage you know, the oldest uh, known language in humanity, which is music. It predates language, right? And it's, it's there's, um, it's you know, I work with one of the biggest, uh, uh, Chinese artist was well, Singaporean, but it's JJ Lin, and um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I learned a lot about the opportunity there to um, create an opportunity and leverage music as a way to unite and unify. And so that's this back to what I've been working on by doing and why I'm here is to support you, Miro, and 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 the pavilion here, digital pavilion, as well as the, the incredible work you've done to educate the world of the importance of technology uh, to bridge us together rather than apart. And I think that's where we uh, line up with music as well as uh, launching our soft diplomacy initiatives um, with music here. Um, we'll have a surprise tomorrow to launch as well. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, and we are delighted to have you here. Perhaps a, a word about the power of celebrities briefly. Or is a, you are, have worked with celebrities. Have you have successfully worked with celebrities on promoting global causes? Well, uh, yeah, I, I'm, most of the artists have, uh, that I've worked with have um, global cause in initiatives, you know, from this, from Lady Gaga and the Born This Way Foundation to, you know, even Paris Hilton, Bruno Mars, and Sia, and all these artists are, are, are global citizens at heart and have been from day one. Uh, it's almost as if they, I can't speak for them, but I've, what I've seen is, is leverage their, their expression, form of expression as a way to get uh, hu humans together. Right, and uh, it starts with the music first, and then, and then you rally a group together, and then you have uh, collective, you know, collective ideology and and wisdom that can be leveraged to then move us forward as opposed to back. Uh, I, I think music again is going to have an access point that no no other form of expression can. It's one of the fastest ways to achieve uh, limbic connection, which is emotional connection, uh, and it's it, it's. No one's immune to it, right? And that's our advantage. No, no, I was just, I was just taking the mic. Okay. <laughs> uh, Domenico, would you like to uh, join us here and to uh, say, uh, <laughs> and to share your perspective on digital art for climate, Web3 technologies, and uh, what we can do together in cities like Milan, uh, in your context, uh, ex uh, experience from the past and uh, somehow reflections on what we are planning uh, over the coming year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miro. Thank you for inviting me 
uh, on the panel. First of all, I want to concur with my colleague before. I strongly believe in music. I'm a musician too, so I have to like, applause about the words that he already said and totally concur. So actually, uh, what we can say about the local environment and the digital art in the local, uh, in the cities and so on. First of all, uh, digital art for climate and all the infrastructure that uh, has built has bring the idea of decentralization. That means that uh, uh, it can uh, uh, act, we can say, on a global level. What does it mean, global level? That, of course, uh, there is like a connection with the global uh, mission and a, a global, uh, we can say, purpose that is the action for climate, uh, the gathering in a unique platform, but as well is able to catch the local environment, like we did in uh, in Milan uh, during pre-COP26. We had uh, an event at uh, the Mid Digital Center in Milan, probably to engage the the local community. I think that uh, this is like uh, very important, and uh, this is actually how we uh, wanted to work together with Miro. Uh, there are communities of uh, uh, digital artists, uh, uh, musicians, uh, youths that want to be engaged really at the very grassroots. They are there, they want to be, like to take voice, to express and so on, and to have a platform like Digital Art for Climate that allows not only to express, but eventually also to, you can say, uh, get some revenues and of course, uh, like get the, the, the proper, uh, uh reward for their work uh, is essential and moreover if this reward is also connected to a big mission that is the climate action is even more important because the the new generation uh i think that uh, we already know here but maybe uh it need to be communicated also we can say to the non-youth we can say they strongly believe not just uh, in uh, uh we can say the finance in the money and so on but in the purpose it needs to have a purpose. We need to have a direction. And the purpose for our generation, our generational challenge is uh, the climate change, is the climate crisis. Uh, with some colleagues, also with Melissa, uh, we started also a sort of a, a inquiry regarding eco-anxiety. And we saw that uh, youth generation are the one of the most affected by the eco-anxiety, this, this anxiety generated by the source of the planet, okay? and not in the other generation, the new generation. And to give them the possibility to act and to do something in this direction is essential because not only is alleviating anxiety, but also is transforming this creativity that is pushed down by the anxiety into creativity, okay? So I think that uh, if I can give a framework, I, I will say these words and uh, thank you, Miro, for inviting me. Thank you very much, Domenico. I think I would give the word now to Irina for some concluding remarks, and then we will work uh, offline <laughs> on some preparations for the press conference, which will be at 2.30 and is online on the UNFCCC homepage. Thank you, Miroslav, and thank you everyone for joining. Uh, this is a unique location, space, event that brings us all together. I don't believe in competition. Competition is the past life. I believe in collaboration. Uh, we have great people here who have all great projects and we will build bridges between these multiple communities, multiple initiatives to really have real impact and really take action towards achieving SDGs. Thank you for joining and see you later today.